This is Barry Belosis, one of the musculoskeletal radiology fellows at Stanford University. Seven-year-old male peewee football presented with gradual worsening of right wrist pain, hand and foot discomfort. Concern for juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The patient in this case presented with his hand and ankle radiograph. In our hand radiograph, we can see bony demineralization of the carpal bones, which is characterized by decreased density when we correlate it to the distal ulnar and radial diaphysis. There is no bony erosion seen or ankylosis on this patient. There is increased density of the soft tissue, as we can see here, and then here, consistent with soft tissue swelling. There is no subluxation of the joints. Subluxation will be characterized by change in alignment of the carpal bones or radiocarpal alignment. On our ankle radiograph, we do not detect significant joint effusion or soft tissue swelling in the ankle. There is a normal hypothesis here at the calcaneus. The patient then went for MRI without contrast. MRI is the most sensitive modality to detect synovitis, and in some cases, contrast is needed to accurately differentiate active synovitis from non-inflammatory joint effusion. It is also the only modality that can detect bone marrow edema, which is another indicator of inflammation. Here we can see on the left-hand side a coronal proton density fluid sensitive images. We can see joint effusion in the distal radio ulnar joint, the radiocarpal joint, and the intercarpal articulations. There is also synovial thickening as seen here. These findings are consistent with underlying synovitis. We also note bone marrow edema involving the capitate and the hamate which are signs of active inflammation. Here on our coronal T1 images, we can see this T1 hypointensity or dark signal throughout the carpal bones and the distal radio ulnar joints, correlating to fluids seen on the fluid sensitive images. There is no bone erosion seen on the carpal bones or distal radius or ulna. Erosions will be characterized by a hypotense defect in the bone, but it's not seen in this case. The axial T2 fluid sensitive images of this wrist demonstrates fluid from the second through the fourth extensor compartment consistent with tenosynovitis, which could also be seen in the setting of JIA. On the ankle, here is our sagittal T2 fat sat imaging demonstrating fluid in the anterior tibiotalar joint and the posterior recess of the posterior subtalar joint. Again, no erosion is detected on these images. This is on a different patient, a 21-year-old male with JIA. Here we can see ankylosis of bilateral carpal bones. This is a fused carpal bones bilaterally without any detectable joint space in this region. Here, there may be slight joint space visualized, but most of the carpal bones and the radiocarpal articulation are fused. 